ask any true Montana football fan who the number one offensive lineman and perhaps the number one player in state history is, and you'll get the same answer. The number one guy on our MT Top 40 looking at the offensive lineman. A career that started with three sports in high school, a couple of different schools in the capital of city, all state accolades in every one of those, and eventually a Hall of Fame career with the Stanford Cardinal, and then Pro Bowls and Super Bowls in the National Football League with the Dallas Cowboys. The number one offensive lineman in Montana history is none other than Hellenus, Pat Donovan. Well, my mom and dad were both uh very interested in keeping us in sports. I come from a family of four boys, and so my brother is older, and I just started playing whenever he started playing. So uh, mom and dad just felt like sports was a good way to keep us out of trouble. And in those days, really good idea. Pat Donovan's career began at Helena Central, but moved to Helena High when the Catholic school closed its doors, creating a tense atmosphere for players and coaches alike. Very surprising to everybody when they closed the school, and so they closed it during the summer. They didn't even close it before the end of the school year. And so we went over to Helena High, 22 starters in football, 10 guys on the team in basketball, and everybody were sophomores. They all expected to start as juniors, I suppose. Well, Helena High had the same group of guys, 22 of each, 10 of each. And so we were doubled up across the board. And so the coaches were really challenged, I think, with mixing and they did a phenomenal job. Donovan thrived at the Bengals and finished his high school career with six first place track and field medals and two state basketball appearances. That includes the 1971 championship season when Helena would defeat Billings West. Donovan earned all state honors on offense and defense on the Helena High football program. Everybody was so involved and so engaged in it. You know, that's the biggest thing. And as you go to college and you go on to the pros, that really becomes something you, uh, it, it becomes more important the further you go because there's less of it. Um, in high school, it's your whole town and it's everybody at school. And it was just a huge community deal. Um, I went back and uh, talked to the uh, 19, it was the 91 team, because we won in 71, and they won the basketball championship in 91. And I went back and I remember telling them, you know, you guys may play in a lot of big deals, you may play in high college, and you may, I've played in the Super Bowl, and let me tell you, this is a bigger deal. Winning the basketball championship in high school was a much bigger deal than than either of those. To me, at the time, you know, it was just huge. And that's the thing that I think everybody forgets and misses, you know, as you go on, it, it, it's special, but there's no way it's more special. It's pretty special when you're in high school. Numerous colleges would come calling, but it was Stanford and California that attracted Donovan, where he broke into the starting lineup on the defensive line as a sophomore. A year later, Donovan led the Cardinal with 109 total tackles, and then as a senior, nine tackles for loss. He was named All-American each of those seasons and was eventually inducted into the Stanford Athletic Hall of Fame and named to Stanford's All-Century team. When you come from Helena, Montana, and then these coaches from UCLA and Stanford and Notre Dame and all these places are coming up, you're really looking over your shoulder and wondering if they got the right guy, you know. Um, I don't care how good you are, you still think, you're worried that you're a little bit of an imposter. And uh, I remember the Stanford guys, I was talking to them, they were pretty honest about it, and they said, yeah, geez, we couldn't tell anything uh, from your films that you sent. We just figured, we watched your basketball games because we couldn't tell anything. Because I think, they said, the guys you sent us in football, I think the guys were all on roller skates. <laughs> you were pushing them around so much, we couldn't tell anything. And you have no technique. NFL teams had obvious interest leading into the 1975 NFL draft, but Donovan says his family had their own preferences. They would call from time to time and say, oh, you know, San Francisco would be great. You ought to go to San Francisco, knowing it's a draft, right? But somehow you, they think you have some. You, San Francisco would be great. We love to go to San Francisco. And then it would be, oh, yeah, Seattle. Seattle's right here. Man, we could go to a lot of games. And then Denver. And, you know, you go to all these places where you could go. And the night before the draft, they called and said, you know, we... You know, we've been talking about this and it's not going to happen, but we really don't care where you go just so it's not Dallas. I swear to God. <laughs> so the next day I got to call him when I got the call and said, 
good news, bad news, you know. Dallas and Donovan became a match made in heaven, moving the All-American defensive end to the offensive line just days into his career. But after two seasons as a backup, he would become a starter in 1977, helping Dallas to a 15-2 record and a 27-10 win over Denver in the Super Bowl. I played nine seasons. We were in the NFC Championship game six times, which, you know, a game away from the Super Bowl six times, that's pretty remarkable for a nine-season career. And then uh, we made it three times, lost twice. So, you know, I mean, but just going, I mean, it's a really... Uh, it's a big deal, and, and I think more than going, you're in the playoffs. We're in the playoffs every year. It would have been kind of tough to languish in one of those cities where, you know, it's not really a part of the, the DNA. In Dallas, it was just so much a part. Everybody just, it, it, which brings with it its own, you know, disappointments. I mean, if we weren't in the Super Bowl, mm -hmm. everybody was very disappointed. Um, you think about it, so you played your NFL career and you only ended the season with a win one time <laughs> because if you're in the playoffs you lose out yeah, yeah. Yeah. so it's you know it's a little frustrating donovan moved to the left tackle position the following season and played with some of the greatest cowboys in team history including running back tony dorsett who would average at least 4.2 yards per carry in every one of donovan's seasons on the line pat donovan was named to the pro bowl in 1979 80 81 and 82 becoming one of only five Dallas offensive linemen to make at least four Pro Bowls. All in all, he started 103 regular season games in his career, helping Dallas to the playoffs in all nine of those seasons, appearing in three Super Bowls, six NFC Championship games, and of course, the one world title. After retiring and living briefly in Dallas, Donovan moved to Whitefish, where he's found great success in the real estate world. The great little town of Whitefish, Whitefish Lake, Flathead Lake, Glacier Park, you know, all the stuff that's around here is, you know, it's the stuff that people, that Iron Horse, I mean, that Montanans have been experiencing. I mean, I started coming up here when I was five years old with my parents who were from Missoula and Butte, so this was their ideal vacation spot. Uh, and it just, all Iron Horse did was expose it to a larger, broader group of people from places with terrible summer weather. <laughs> the number one offensive lineman and once again to many, the number one overall in Montana's history, Helena's own Pat Donovan. Take a look at some of the offensive linemen surrounding him on the honorable mention list, including Billing Central's Casey McMillan. We've got more on him on that honorable mention list at montanasports.com. Other guys being discussed, Former MSU fellas Cliff Heisel, Jeff Hansen, from the Grizz, Scott Curry, Chad Germer. You can find more on the entire list. That is at montanasports.com. And tune in again next week where we move to the tight end position. Richie Melby, MTN Sports.